On this episode of Office Hours with Dr. Guy, I give you my number one book recommendation. Bring your questions to Office Hours with Dr. Guy. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 19 of Office Hours with Dr. Guy. And in this episode, I interview Dr. Laura Hyatt, one of the authors of this amazing book, The Dissertation Journey, the number one book that I recommend to all doctoral candidates. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this interview. Well, everybody, today I have the distinct pleasure. Dr. Laura Hyatt co-authored the internationally best-selling book, The Dissertation Journey, now in its third edition. She is a professor at the University of Laverne, where she served as department chair and teaches in the organizational leadership doctoral program. She is an associate of an international think tank, participated as an advisor to the Office of the Assistant Secretary for Planning and Evaluation at the Department of Health and Human Services in Washington, D.C., and was appointed to a White House policy conference by the President of the United States. She has developed contemporary research methods utilized by researchers in the United States and Europe, including dynamic narrative approach and the case story, case story research method. And, you know, joining us today upon the release of the third edition of the dissertation journey, Dr. Hyatt. Hello. Hello. How are you? Oh my gosh. So blessed to be here with you today. You know, this book has been a powerful force in my life. I, as a doctoral student myself, using the first edition of the book, this was a guide for me as I was going through troubled times. So just thank you so much for the opportunity to be here with you today and to ask you questions about this third edition. I'm looking forward to that. I, you know, so like I face challenges as a doctoral candidate and you've worked with just loads and loads and loads of doctoral candidates uh, through your book and also through your one-on-one -on -one exposure to them within, a, within the doctoral program in which you work. And I, I think a lot of candidates come with a lot of, a lot of myths in their minds because I, you know, it's like during my first day of my doctoral program, I showed up in a, a three-piece suit and tie because that's what I thought a doctoral student did. What are some of the myths? <laughs> what are some of the myths that, or two, that you find a face doctoral dissertation and thesis writers as they come to your doorstep? Well, I think that um, it's not too different from anything else that most of us haven't ever tried before. And even though we've been successful at other things, when we start something we haven't tried before, we're always a little apprehensive. I think one of the misconceptions that students have um, as they begin writing the dissertation is that the process will be similar to that of an assignment. For instance, the student will write a chapter and send it to their advisor or their chair and get it back with comments. And then the students will be asked to revise it and they'll resubmit it. And students often expect that it will be good to go. That typically isn't the case. Mm -hmm. In fact, unlike an assignment, uh, there will likely be multiple revisions. And I always encourage students to start to develop a mindset that the dissertation is a marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. I, I find that a lot of universities to help with this have installed a lot of these dissertation writing courses throughout the course of a doctoral program. And I think a certain, to a certain degree, those help, right? But do you think that that sometimes reinforces this idea in their heads of this is an assignment and as long as my professor in that class was satisfied, my chair will be satisfied then? Yeah, I think that that probably contributes to it. Um, I, but I also think that it, we're all a product of our experiences That's as right. well as our education. And you, you as a student have just gone through um, a number of years in your coursework and you're ready to begin your dissertation and you know that's your experience is completing assignments. So that I think plays a big role, but this is nothing like one of those. <laughs> no, it, not at all, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I wish there was a way for us to ingrain that earlier, but I'm not so sure that especially in any kind of developmental learning that you can do that. I think I think what needs to happen is, you know, students need to realize that every assignment that they complete um, is intended to prepare them also 
for their dissertation. And at times, I know a lot of candidates that I speak to, they have this, they, they, re, they submit for revision, they submit initially, they get requests for feedback and they submit again. It's often that, that next round of revision where they feel like they've been slapped because they thought they, they thought they did the job, right? And mm-hmm. when you're working with candidates, how do you help, I mean, do you help soften that blow or, and if you do, how do you help them prepare for getting that feedback back again? You know, I can only speak for myself, but uh, when I'm working with the students that I work with or chair, oftentimes I'll tell them that in the very beginning is that we need to have a conversation about how this is going to go. Mm-hmm. And I think I think a lot of chairs and advisors do that. I, I think that we've all sort of been either taught or somehow have learned that it's good to set a good beginning and the stage for what's going to happen so there's no surprises. Um, even even said, though, I believe that some students do are surprised when they get it back for a second or a third go around. So hmm. it's, part, it's part of the process. It, it sure is. And I, I think the advantage is, as someone like you, who's been a chair so many times, you and you've worked with doctoral candidates directly as a faculty member and, and in other capacities, you know that uh, with through your experience, there are some hints and some clues that some students are more likely to finish than others. And in your experience, um, you know, what are some defining clues where you look at a candidate and you can say uh, they're maybe more likely to finish or or most likely to finish compared to others? That's an excellent question. It's and it's a hard question to answer because all of us are individuals. That's right. Chairs. Both chairs and students. So, uh, the, the book, the dissertation journey, addresses some of that. And uh, for me, it comes down to, I mean, I can amalgamate that into two things, and that's preparation and perseverance. Um, so, any first endeavor is more likely to result in success if you're prepared, um, and that entails doing the hard work ahead of time. Um, Similar to what I said uh, in a prior uh, question, um, taking advantage of learning from every professor and every course as all have something to offer, um, and they all prepare you for completing your dissertation. And perseverance is crucial in any challenging effort. Anyone who's ever tried anything, whether it's uh, first time learning to do something or a marathon or climbing a mountain, which is our metaphor, uh, it's the difference between those who are successful in spite of the obstacles if you have perseverance. So perseverance becomes very important. And I know sometimes at midnight when students are trying to write, that perseverance can wane a bit because it's late and you're tired and this is the third time you've done this thing. And, but um, that's what separates the people who succeed and the people who don't, really. And I think sometimes candidates can have some demons in their vo- in their in their head that can say things like, "Well, maybe you weren't supposed to do this ever, and maybe maybe you've just fooled everyone up until this point to get into this program and get to this level." And are there are there ways and times that you reassured students that that just maybe through some major changes they can make big steps towards finishing? Mm-hmm. So. I think that, as a rule, um, everyone faces that demon, Mm. you know, and that's known as the imposter phenomenon, as you know. And um, we all feel like imposters sometimes when we're trying to do something and we either complete it really quickly and think, oh my gosh, that was too easy, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, maybe we don't deserve that, or we run into obstacles and we don't think we deserve that because we're not capable of doing that. I think the best way to get through that is to understand that that's going to happen anytime that, you know, anytime we face a challenge or an obstacle, we need to first understand who we are. And secondly, we need to go forward with that and the way that you go forward with that not only understanding who you are and how you manage things and being prepared for that, but also surrounding yourself with 
a good support group of people that care about you and uh, want you to succeed. And that includes personal friends and families and spouses and whoever you have in your life um, that you feel might just give you that at a girl or at a boy uh, at a time you need it. That's really important during any long process in something that's challenging. One of the reasons that I recommend The Dissertation Journey as the number one book that I that any doctoral candidate should read is that in each of the sections, it provides a very, first of all, a very base level knowledge. It starts at that definition levels first and then allows people to go into the higher application levels where a lot of other books that that I've you know sometimes come across start really at the higher analytic level and don't provide students the most basic information along with the high level at the same time. And I think that's because um, a lot of candidates, they are in doctoral programs that don't necessarily pr- help them develop research writing capacities before they start doing their dissertation. What are some central skills that, or capacities that you hope doctoral candidates would develop even if their coursework does not offer that? Well, the first is to be organized um, uh, because you're not going to, nothing's going to get on the page unless you sit down and write and you need time to do it. Uh, I think that um, people that want to get their doctorate are generally uh, people who also want to offer something to others. And Mm -hmm. a lot of times those others take time away from the time that we need to write. Uh, I heard a famous writer once say that figure out the time of day that's best for you, that works best for you to accomplish things, and don't give that time away to someone else. Keep it for yourself when you're doing a project like a dissertation. And I think that's actually wise advice. Uh, The time that you work best, uh, if you can structure and organize that, I think that that will be very helpful. I think that um, writing clearly so that the reader understands the meeting you intend is, is very important. It's critical to any, any good writing. And something that we call coherence, which is adhering, basically in this case, is adhering to a line of logic. Mm-hmm. Be sure and build bridges that connect sentences and paragraphs um, with the ideas that, that you want to make meaning of for the, for the reader. Uh, you know, the <clears throat> every academic discipline and education and social science um, often use APA 6th uh, edition as a style manual, but every academic discipline has a style manual, no matter what it is, whether it's APA 6 or MLA or any other style manual that, that might be required by your program. Become familiar with it. Make it your friend. It really contains a wealth of useful information. And I know oftentimes when students have received papers back that have said, oh, you haven't done this according to, for instance, APA 6th edition, that it becomes um, something that becomes a bit of um, an enigma to them. And I think that in this case, making it your friend leaning into the APA manual. Uh, If you go through it, you'll find a lot of things that can actually help you. And again, I'm sure that's true with MLA and any other style manual. But don't try to fight it because that won't do you any good. Most people when they hear APA or MLA, they think it, it like it's just a rule book and here's what the style looks like. They don't realize that there's these entire sections that talk about how to write logically, how to develop coherence throughout. Yeah, and if if it helps any, um, I I teach APA and I still keep my book by my computer opened at all times mm. when I'm writing for publication simply because, you know, that's what it's there for. It's there to keep us all honest and um, myself included. I think I think it's important to just use it, make it your friend. 
a lot of candidates are involved in online programs or they're separated with sort of a wall of email with their chair. And something that I that surprised me as I started working with more candidates is many candidates are not permitted to directly phone their chairs. That That's a thing out there, apparently. And so or their chair is unreachable and typically is available only via email. And so sometimes uh, developing coherence and uh, when they're when they're in that process, uh, in that that really gritty part of the writing process where they're trying to construct that line of logic, often their chair is the only person that is seeing their writing. And so for someone that feels somewhat separated from their chair, what are some ways beyond reading the APA manual that they can either engage with others or, or how can they develop more awareness of their own line of logic in their writing? Well, I think there's a number of writing books out there that are, are uh, general writing books, not necessarily academic, but I think that they have good advice um, and might be more accessible to some folks or feel more accessible. So I think that it's fine to read some of those books. I think that um, many universities, including mine, encourage people to develop a, a different kinds of support groups. So mm. you need the kind of support group that goes, that says to you, uh, you can do this, at a girl, at a boy, but you also need a support group that you can talk to, whether that's study buddies in your own cohort or your own class, or people that have gone through doctoral work, uh, and we encourage that. We encourage people to form those support groups of other people so you can do read-arounds of your work. You can have somebody else read it and say, but it has to be somebody who will tell you honestly, mm -hmm. honestly, that's honestly. Right. That's right. Um, you know, this I didn't understand this. You know, and I think that that's important too. So I think having all kinds of people that you can surround yourself with, and I know that's not an easy task in some cases, especially for those who may be in all online programs but don't have as much connection. But I do think that it's important to have, and you can create that. Uh, lots of students do. You can create that support. The dissertation journey is a bestseller across multiple editions. I mean, looking at not only the Amazon ratings, but just simply the fanfare around this book. Um, this newest edition is no exception. What has allowed this book to be number one, the number one dissertation writing book across all editions time and time again? Well, I think the best person to ask that question would be the students who have used it. However, <clears throat> I can tell you what they've shared, you know, some students have shared with me that yep. they like about the book. Okay. And that includes that it's written directly to them. Mm -hmm. So it's, we, we wrote that directly. And, you know, this is, um, I want to give great tribute to uh, the, you know, the first author on this, which is uh, Dr. Carol Roberts. Uh, she, she's, she created this book and she wanted it to be directly to the student because she realized that uh, a lot of books don't talk directly to the student and this is about the student and they're the ones that are in this particular situation that, you know, sometimes when they're alone writing, which, you know, writing is a very lonely task, as we all know. Mm -hmm. So I think that the fact that she decided to write this directly to the student was brilliant. Um, uh, it also offers clear information that in some cases isn't provided in research or dissertation courses, including some useful tips, hopefully. And um, it's structured in the order of a dissertation. There's some chapters that are to front load writing and those kinds of skills and forming groups of people that might support you. But then it it's actually um, structured so that it goes uh, chapter by chapter, and uh, we use a um, general uh, five-chapter idea here, a concept in which to explain our ideas, actually. Um, so I think that's helpful because it's orderly. Uh, and I think one of the things that both Dr. Roberts and myself hope is that we can encourage and build some confidence through some of the things that we've written. And and this is, you know, this book for many students becomes another study buddy. Because when you're sitting there 
in the middle of the night or in early morning or at a time when you don't want to bother someone else. Um, you can open the book and hopefully something in the book will pique your interest but will also encourage you and build confidence for you and to make you feel supported because that's the intent of the book. The book is to the book was written to help students not only get through the process, but get through the process of building a quality product. Mm -hmm. one, they'll, one they'll be proud of. What is new in this edition? Well, that is a, a big question because this edition <clears throat> has undergone a substantial revision. Um, I would say about 80% has actually been rewritten. Um, the chapter headings remain, so don't let that fool anybody, because we wanted to keep the integrity of the mountain metaphor. Uh, it's something that we can all hopefully relate to, that any challenge is like climbing a big mountain. And um, so we kept those headings, but what lies within the chapter and the text itself is all been revised, pretty much. Um, there's very little that hasn't been revised. So one of the things that we have in there that um, is been revised and is brand new is that at the end of each chapter, we have a number of websites that uh, direct students to places, hopefully, that is uh, helpful to them and that will guide them uh, if they have any questions. Uh, and I think that those are things that um, all of us use. Is we we often use uh, the internet and Google and everything else that we can to find out answers. Answers are easy to get. Question, good questions are hard to get. But what we'd like is to make this easier for students to have access to those things. So we tried to point them in those directions. You know, that said, I want to be very careful here because I know that websites change. And so right. um, one hopes that they'll remain at least for the next in immediate time. <laughs> but um, but yes, so we have added those as well. And, um, and we've made some other kinds of revisions, not only to update it, but to also add some areas of clarity. We've amalgamated some chapters. Uh, we've taken out some chapters um, because we felt as though those were no longer pertinent. Uh, so I think it's almost like a new book. It, it feels like that. I mean, I, having used every edition I, and pointing so many students up until just this past month to the second edition of the book, I have a lot of candidates reaching out to me saying, hey, I noticed a third edition is out. Should I buy it? And my answer is, of course, yes, because first of all, the resources at the end of each chapter are are highly invaluable, but in particular, there is no other comprehensive guide out there like this. I mean, there's lots of books about individual research methods and individual approaches, but there's nothing this comprehensive and this set, which sets this book apart in every edition. But this book is, it feels like an entire rewrite of the book. I'm glad you noticed that. And thank you for saying that. I, I really do think that students going forward um, in this day and age, computers being what they are and electronics being what they are and the fact that things are changing, you know, pretty rapidly that um, students may be shortchanging themselves if they don't get, if they're planning to get any edition of this book, if they don't get this edition, the third edition, I think they may be selling themselves short a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I you know between the electronic edition and this physical copy, I, I own both, but the, but the physical edition is just so beautiful. And well, uh, one thing I know about you, Dr. Hyatt, is that uh, that where doctoral students, you know, are genu genuinely and generally um, focused on finishing the, their dissertation, I know that you have been really stooped in the publication world, and in particular, uh, you've been really instrumental in in your work with dynamic narrative approach and also the case story research method. Um, can you share your thoughts on? how students should be considering publication, presenting at academic conferences, beyond just dissertation work? Yeah, um, I can try. Uh, it's, again, it's, it's, a big, it's a big topic when you think about it. And, and inherent in the topic is 
your experiences and, and your skills and your preparation to do that. So, you know, every doctoral program, every university, every student, every advisor has some similarities and differences. Um, and that, that is the truth, as much as universities may not like to admit that. To mm -hmm. um, but some doctoral programs or dissertation chairs require that students publish or present during their coursework. Uh, for those students, it's expected. For others, it may not be a requirement. And so either way, one thing I'd like for all students to know, doctoral students to know, is that not taking your work forward will, may imply to others that your dissertation research wasn't worry, uh, worthy of further contribution hmm. to the field. And it's important to also note that Earning your doctorate comes with certain implicit expectations, including an obligation as a scholar to contribute to your academic discipline beyond the dissertation, such as publishing or presenting in an academic venue. Now, I know that that's not an easy thing to do, and it may not be something that students want to do while they're writing their dissertation, and that's up to them, of course, and up to their university and their chair. But it always helps if you have a professor, even if you do it after your dissertation is completed, it always helps if you have a professor that's willing to mentor you in these endeavors because there are multiple uh, multiple rivers to navigate. And so um, one of the things I would encourage is, is for someone to, if they're interested in doing this, and I hope everyone is, is that you get together with either some people that are professors that can help you with that, or even former students that have done that, because they can help you as well. That said, every single student that completes a dissertation is capable of learning about the process independently. So don't let it dissuade you. Uh, I think it's really, um, not only is it an important thing to do, but I think it's really a gratifying thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that all of us remember who teach or who publish is the first time that we see our name in print. And in many, for many people, that first time in an academic venue is your dissertation mm -hmm. and how good that feels. And once you see that and once you've had a taste of that, imagine what it's going to feel when you take that forward independently. And... Um, most of the students that I work with, um, it's something they know that I want them to do and encourage them to do. And uh, so they try and do it. I've um, published with a number of my dissertation students, and I always encourage them to take first authorship because it's usually something they're interested in. But um, it's in an effort to help them as well. And I think that every person who becomes a doctor, um, even if you choose not to publish, take a look at academic conferences. Academic conferences might just give you that imp impetus to publish going forward, but if nothing else, you have a venue to basically take your own research forward. And you spend a lot of time doing that. Why wouldn't you want to take it forward? I think about the... I think about the stories and the perspectives that a lot of candidates will encounter when doing their research. They're often becoming the holders and the storytellers for the, their participants. And often when they publish then, they're helping bring that story and those perspectives out into a larger audience that might not have ever been seen before. Well, would, would more rarely be seen because it's just uh, being in a dissertation versus being out at a, at a conference or in a more widespread published paper. Mm -hmm. Well, and a lot of students, um, dissertations or student doctoral students want to somehow use their doctorate. Other, you know, they may be in a field which is not necessarily um, working at a university, but they they want to use it. We all want to use our doctorate. We spend a lot of time getting it. So one of the primary ways that you can do that is by presenting or publishing and. I often tell students that um, if they ever do want to become a professor or an adjunct professor, for instance, that 
it's not an easy thing to do any longer because it's a, it's always been very competitive, but it's gotten it's become more so. And one of the things that uh, any search committee is going to look at uh, is whether or not they've presented or published or taken their work forward in an academic venue. And um, so that's also a good reason to do it. If that's if that's of interest to your listeners, I I would encourage them to think about that. Um, and if not before or after or during the dissertation, certainly after. Of course, take a break after you complete your <laughs> dissertation. <laughs> take a break and a breath and celebrate um, your success and your accomplishment. Um, but I would say within six months, you might want to start thinking about it. Sometimes when you let it get so far away in the it becomes very distant, and um, it's easy to kind of let that go. A lot of the people that that follow me on this uh, on YouTube and on Facebook and so on, they often were um, what maybe we call scholarly practitioners. Uh, a lot of them are superintendents of schools or directors in a school district. Uh, for people in that world, uh, is is presenting publication something they should consider? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, um, many of my students have. Uh, that I've worked with have been not only in school districts but in organizations such as government agencies like police and things like that and uh, they've all told me anyway that they have enjoyed the post process as well that it gave them a chance to be out there independently as an independent scholar and um, go to these academic venues, which many of them had not been exposed to, uh, the scholarly venues where people are, the associations where people are presenting uh, their work, and it allows them to also uh, meet other people that are doing good work in the field, and in many cases, it's a great way to connect with people uh, if they if they do want to publish or present at a, at a conference. Sometimes you can meet people there. And um, pretty soon they're asking you to be on a panel or, you know, there's great collaboration that's encouraged in these venues. So um, if nothing else, I, I encourage people to find the association, the academic association that, that best fits their desires and their field and um, go to the meeting and see what happens. I think I think they'll be surprised if they haven't been to one. I think it's a... It's a real learning activity. It's great professional development. And sometimes uh, it presents a, a job opportunity as well. So, I mean, it, it, it can be a, a it, can, it can serve many masters, let's put it that way. One final question for you, and I think this will serve as, as uh, a last word from you uh, for, this, uh, for this interview. I, one of the reasons that I consistently am telling people to buy the dissertation journey is because hope and determination are just so so hugely emphasized within this book. So for candidates that are listening to this and are facing some hardship in their writing process, what what would you say to them? Well, the first thing I'd say to them is you can do this. You first of all, you got admitted to a doctoral program, which is no easy feat. And while there's probably less than 3% of people in the world that have their doctorate. I've heard multiple numbers, but we'll go with the higher one. Um, you were able to get into this doctoral program, and you were able to complete the doctoral program, at least the coursework, prior to the dissertation. You can do this. There's no question that you can do this. What might help you realize that is First of all, to know that your dissertation advisor wants you to succeed. I don't, I've never met a dissertation chair or advisor that doesn't want their students to succeed. Um, but that means that you're going to have to produce a quality product. And part of them, part of that dance of the back and forth editing and revising is necessary in order to produce that quality product. The other thing I'd say again is surround yourself with people that support you and want you to succeed. Sometimes we all need that pat on the back or that encouragement 
or even the tough love that says, you chose this, now go do it. <laughs> um, often that comes from your spouse, by the way. That's right. Um, <laughs> right? Uh, find a good editor that is proficient both in writing mechanics and in the style manual, for instance, APA 6th edition or whichever style manual is required. In advance, make sure you work out the payment structure and expectations, not just theirs, but yours as well, because that's really important. That good editor, by the way, might just save you from having to redo many of those uh, revisions. Embrace this as an opportunity to grow and improve. If you look at this as a chore and something that it, you feel is, is punishing you somehow, um, it's going to be really hard for you to complete a good dissertation. So embrace it as a, as a challenge that, you know, it's an opportunity for you to grow and improve. After all, you're going to be writing a book. Think about that. Your dissertation is like a book. You're going to be writing a book. And that's always a challenge. But how wonderful is it when you complete it and you see the fruits of your labor? And finally, and you know I'm going to say this, yep. keep the dissertation journey on your desk, close by, for useful tips, and most of all, if nothing else, for moral support. Um, I think sometimes when we when we can learn things from a book, um, which we all do, when we learn from reading, uh, when we learn from writing, uh, it's very useful. And if the book can also be our friend, that's even and say it in a friendly way, which is what we attempted to do in this book, I think that that's um, very encouraging. So those are the suggestions I would have. Dr. Laura Hyatt, thank you so much. Uh, the dissertation journey is available in its third edition at fine booksellers everywhere. And again, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you today to just talk about this Go book, the, the number one book I recommend to all doctoral candidates. Well, thank you so much, and it's been a pleasure speaking with you also, and uh, I can't tell you how meaningful this is to me. I mean, um, I know you well and feel as though that you're just such a quality person, and uh, you do such good work, and it's just been a pleasure to be with you today. Thanks again, Dr. Hyatt. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye. Well, everybody, that is it for episode 19 of Office Hours with Dr. Guy. My great hope is that you will go to Amazon.com and check out The Dissertation Journey. It is a practical and comprehensive guide to doing everything related to your dissertation. It is the number one book that I recommend to all dissertation writers, and I hope you will take a look at it. Uh, additionally, I hope that you will subscribe to this channel, click the notification button below so that way you can hear more about what I'm up to. Leave me a comment in the comment section about what you'd like me to cover in the next episode. My greatest hope is that this week will just be filled with productivity for you as you are reaching those dreams that you're hoping to reach. Take care, team.